Hello and welcome to the Magic Minute. My name is Kyle as far as I know, and in this episode we're going to be talking about stage magic. Cue the intro! Now what is stage magic? Well, it's a clever combination between the word stage and magic. You know, stage magic. It's all those big box illusions like the Saw the Lady in Half or when the magician makes himself disappear and then reappears out in the audience, that's stage magic. One of the biggest names in stage magic is actually two names. And it's these two guys right here, Penn and Teller. Now Penn and Teller have been doing stage magic longer than I've even been alive. And they've been doing it across stages all over America. And they've even got their own show, which I'm not going to plug because this isn't an advertisement for them. Uh, another very famous, like world, worldwide famous stage magician is the old chap. You don't know who that is. Okay. Uh, he's actually my secondary YouTube character. He originally started out as a slapstick comedy tribute to Charlie Chaplin, but then I thought, what if maybe he did stage magic? Uh, lately I've been posting videos of him doing magic tricks outside. I've been doing stage magic tricks as the old chap outside because my house isn't big enough and I don't have my own personal stage. And I hope to one day get the old chap on TV doing stage magic, which would be the dream. One of the biggest obstacles to being a stage magician, or any act on stage, singing, dancing, anything, is uh, stage fright. Whenever I get stage fright, my hands get shaky, shakier than usual that is. My voice gets higher than usual that is. Uh, my palms get sweaty, uh, vomit on my sweater already, my spaghetti. And one of the things that I found does not help me in the slightest is picturing everyone in their underwear, or worse, naked. Because that just makes me uncomfortable, you know, even more so uncomfortable. Because, like, here are all these half-naked people staring at me. I'm trying not to stare back at them, because, you know, who wants that? It's creepy. But what I have found works for me, though, is controlled breathing, taking deep breaths, and just go out there with full confidence. But one good way to boost confidence is to make your audience laugh and clap immediately. Like, if you can go out there, do something funny, say something funny, then they're going to start laughing, they're going to start clapping for you. You start to feel better about yourself, which in turn makes you perform better. And if you still feel uncomfortable on stage, then start with a smaller audience. You know, just a group of friends to start. And if you still feel uncomfortable performing for just a small group of friends, then maybe you need to practice a bit more. Which is the number one rule of any performer, no matter what you're doing, is practice, practice, practice. And when you're done practicing, practice some more. So once you've practiced to where the um, motions are burned into your mind and you don't even have to think about doing them anymore, then you're ready to perform for a small crowd. Just a group of friends, your family, maybe even a couple strangers off the street even. You're just building up your confidence doing that. Once people start to realize how great you are, get on stage. And I remember one of the first tricks I ever did in front of an audience that wasn't just my family. It was a pretty simple trick, so I don't see how I could have messed it up. And all it was was just running through the cards, shuffling them as I go, just say stop whenever, Suppose we see a stop right here. Our card right here, I can see it in the front facing camera, it's the nine of hearts. But in the trick I wasn't supposed to know. <coughs> so I'd give the cards a cut to bring it closer to the top. And obviously it wasn't this top card, the eight of clubs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deal out cards face up. Just tell me well don't tell me that actually. Just look for your card. And hopefully. The next card that I flip over will be yours. Do you believe it? No? Well, I'd, I'd bet money on it, but again, talking to a camera. So the next card that I flip over is going to be your card. You ready? Three, two, one. The nine of hearts we flip that over. It's just a stupid little gag, but I mean, I was so nervous, I wasn't sure if I'd even get through it. And you know what's funny is I'm pretty sure the card that I used was the same card that happened just now. That was not planned. The first time I did that trick, I was really nervous. My hands were shaking worse than usual, but I've already done that bit. Uh, I, was, I was stuttering and stammering and I couldn't quite get all the words out. I wasn't projecting my voice. I was so nervous that the front row of the audience couldn't even hear my uh, patter. So they hooked me up to a microphone and that didn't even help much. But I eventually made it through the trick and the people that saw it clapped, I think. I really don't remember because I was so nervous. But now that I've practice the trick more and I'm more comfortable performing, if I were to try that trick again, 
I can probably have the audience laughing just doing that simple little trick because of a stage presence. Stage presence is how you present yourself on stage. And that's the only way I can explain it. Stage presence really is your character on stage. Like, for example, I'm awkward, so I make myself more awkward on stage when I'm performing. And the audience eats that up, they love it most of the time. Uh, some people like to go for the dark, ominous, Chris Angel type thing. Other people just stupid jokes the entire way through, and I love those. I love stupid jokes. The best way to find your character is to exaggerate your natural traits, and I don't quite know if I'm making sense saying this. Does this make sense? No. Awesome. Okay, just be yourself, but more powerful version of yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting closer. That's my brother Andy, ladies and gentlemen. So I think that's enough making no sense about uh, being on stage, so let's do a magic trick. Make this table disappear. Ta-da! Was that camera cut too obvious? This magic trick is a prime example of stage magic, because if I was doing it on the stage, you'd be able to see the magic. So we're going to start with a uh, spotted bag that I cleverly call the spot bag. And on the outside, of course, are the spots. That's why it's called the spot bag. And on the inside, there's nothing. You can see that. There's nothing. But if we turn it inside out, there is now nothing on the outside of the bag and spots on the inside. Spots on the inside. So I'm going to take this uh, black hanky, hold it above the white wall, and we'll put it into the spot bag. We'll take this white hanky, and we'll put it into the spot bag. Now with just a gentle tap, the, uh, the hankies have changed colors. So now we have the black hanky turned white. There we go. Amazing. And the white hanky turned black. Isn't that incredible? You don't seem to impress. I'm assuming it. I guess you're watching, I don't know. So, we can uh, do this a different way. Since we're using a spot bag, it only makes sense that we put spots on the hankies. All it takes is a gentle tap, and the uh, black hanky turned white now has white spots, and the white hanky turned black now has black spots. I didn't like that one either. Come on, this, this is comedy gold. You know. Okay, you probably want to see white spots on the black hanky and black spots on the white hanky. Well, what do I look like, a magician? Oh yeah. Okay, I tell you what, all it takes is just a gentle tap. And now the black hanky turned white with white spots has now become the black hanky turned white with white spots turned black spots. And the uh, white hanky turned black with black spots has now become the white hanky turned black with white spots turned black spots. And all those spots, I think we're actually missing one. Did I drop? Oh, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Spot. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as Spot did. And uh, the next one will be coming out, obviously, next Wednesday, because it's a weekly show. And I guess please like and subscribe to my channel or whatever the YouTubers say these days. And until next time, Riff!